been through a transitional period um, in introducing regulations for the bigger goods vehicles on the island. And for the first uh, 13 months, um, operators, people who operate these vehicles, have had the opportunity to register with us uh, and they've had quite a number of concessions because it's beginning a new chapter for them. Um, now that comes to an end on the 1st of February and after the 1st of February anybody who wants to register as an operator has to jump through quite a lot more hoops um, and we'll have to be absolutely sure that they're right before they'll be allowed to register. So this is the completion of the operator registration phase. How have things gone in that 13 months? Well I've been really very impressed with it because we've um, we didn't know, we hadn't a clue, nobody had a clue how many operators there were on the island. And there were a few guesstimates that said, well, there's probably about 100. Um, we've actually ended up pretty close to 200, um, so considerably more than we'd originally been led to believe. Um, it's been a fascinating experience because uh, we've obviously, from the committee's point of view, we've been out talking both formally and informally with the trade. Um, we've learnt a lot. I mean, we have members on the committee who are very experienced in dealing with the trade, um, but not necessarily with the Manx trade. And um, so we've all been learning a great deal. And I'm sure um, the trade's been learning what it is that the new regulations require, how it is that the RTLC is going to be bringing it into effect. What's been really encouraging is an awful lot of the trade have shown a great willingness to try and improve, to try and meet the regulations where they weren't meeting them uh, before. Um, and I'm really quite heartened at the way that's gone. So things generally have been received positively by the yeah. trade then, have they? Oh, I think so. I mean, the, in, inevitably, the, there are a small number of people who probably would rather we weren't there and they didn't have to be regulated and they didn't have to maintain their vehicles to the extent that we require, are now requiring them to. But at the end of the day, it's all about public safety. It's not about, um, you know, sort of what people would prefer. Uh, it, it is we must keep the public safe. And we all know that there have been in the past um, events where people have been hurt uh, by poorly maintained uh, goods vehicles. Um, our job is to we, we can't eliminate it, unfortunately, but what we can do is reduce the risk. And now um, those people who are operating wagons, they've got to go and make sure that they're checked every quarter for a full safety check, and they've got to have a proper uh, maintenance regime running. Um, and from where necessary, we'll be going out and checking that that's actually happening. Has the period, has the uh, completion, well, has the operator registration phase, has it thrown up any areas for improvement, any things that could be tweaked along the way? I think while um, obviously the big operators, particularly those who operate across, um, they're, all this has come as no surprise to them at all. By and large, they were complying with it, although sometimes their on-island operation was not sort of 100% complying, um, but they knew exactly what needed doing and they've got on with it. Um, for some of the on-island operators, it's all a bit new to them. And um, the fact that we're requiring them to have those lorries checked and the checks recorded every day before the lorry goes out, um, that's, uh, you know, caused some people to raise their eyebrows. But um, they're recognising that that's a standard that's required of the trade really around the world, or certainly the better regulated um, jurisdictions. Um, so all we're doing is bringing people up to a standard that the public would really expect. Where do things stand with enforcement? How's that carried out? Well, enforcement so far uh, has not been um, something that we've been uh, applying because we've been in a transitional period. We're giving people the opportunity to get used to the new situation. And going forward, essentially what we're interested in is educating everybody to what is required. But of course, if people don't um, step up to the plate and they, they don't maintain their vehicles properly, we'll have to do something about it. Now, the, the sort of thing that the RTLC will be doing is when... The, all these big vehicles, goods vehicles, have to go to the test centre every year. 
If they fail a test, that will be reported to us, and we will probably want to talk to the operator, especially if there's evidence that maintenance has not been properly carried out, um, uh, to see what they're going to do to improve. So the emphasis at the moment is going to be on improving where we know something's gone wrong. We're also going to be appointing a goods vehicle inspector. We're in the process of doing that at the moment. And the goods vehicle inspector, it's only a small part-time job, but we will be asking that goods inspe vehicle inspector to go out and look at um, how the scheme is working. And of course, if people are not conforming to it, again, we'll want to talk to them to find out what they can do to get up to the standard. So people will be given every opportunity to get things right before you come down on them. Oh, absolutely. The, the idea of this is to raise standards, and you raise standards best by educating everybody, making sure they know all about it. But we're under no illusions that with any regulated job, there are always a few people um, at the bottom of the pile who are reluctant uh, to come up to standard. And, um, I mean, the message is... That's what's going to be expected of them. And if they don't come up to standard, uh, the RTLC will, will be taking some action about it. And will you be reviewing this as you go along to see how it all works as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's, that's half the trick. And, of course, what we'll be doing is working closely with partner agencies, with obviously the test centre, which is a, a great sense of uh, um, help to us, uh, with the police um, who see so much that goes on on the roads and the other agencies who've got dealings with goods vehicles um, and if we get reports back that uh, all is not well um, we'll be asking operators to come in and explain uh, what what it is that uh, they're actually doing